I'm starting to get pretty excited for this game, Rube. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Definitely the the game of the year uh, in the league. Really, it's uh, you know two of the best teams uh, going at each other. There's there's so many angles: the revenge angle, the Purdy angle, uh, the trash talk angle. We'll get into all of them. Yeah, even without all that, though, yeah. it's still just a really good football game. Yeah. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast. I just wish it was at one o'clock. Presented by right. Nissan. Couldn't be with me too. Yeah. Niners coming from the West. But anyway. Yeah. Well, let me start that over. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. Uh, I want to start this podcast by saying thank you, everyone who's sending us their Spotify wrapped. Uh, and we're at the top of a lot of them. That's really cool to see. It is. And the ones that were second or third, it just kind of motivates me to. <laughs> work harder and harder to get better and better yeah i see like new heights above us and I'm like ah the kelsey's i know i'm not happy about that i know but it, it's funny sometimes it's like new heights and then sometimes it's green light with chris long it's like all these guys we've covered are now <laughs> beating us and i don't appreciate it i like the ones that are like there was one that said it we were like behind a college basketball mm -hmm. pod so i like the diversity there yeah i do too uh this is a good chance to to remind you guys that if you're not subscribe to please do that i think on youtube our nbc sports philadelphia channel is just under a hundred thousand subscribers so uh, i know it'll make our bosses happy if if we help us uh get to a hundred thousand so let's yeah, do that 99 too if you haven't done that already all right uh this is a, a fun game this weekend we'll get into the matchups a little bit later uh, plus some other stuff, Desha Deshaun Jackson officially retiring, so we'll try to put his career in context. But uh, this week is so much fun, and honestly, some of the fun is all the trash talk that went on really in the offseason. And, and one of those trash-talking instances was Debo Samuel calling James Bradbury trash, and then this week had a chance to walk back those comments, and he didn't. So James Bradbury this week was asked about that. Uh, we cut it up. We have it here for you. Let's take a listen. Of this week, we, you hear Debo Samuel's comments on your play. What do you think? How do you respond? Uh, it's a big game for us this week. You know, playing a great team. And uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us. And I can't wait to go out there and play. Is there any extra motivation at all when you hear things like that or even think of last year? No, nah, because last year's last year. Um, I think the extra motivation just comes from it being a division opponent. You know, they're in the NFC. I'm oh, not bad, a conference opponent. You know, because they're in the NFC with us, and uh, they're a great team. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge for us. When you hear him say something like that, <laughs> and then double down on it, what what is the key to staying focused and not letting that affect you in any way? Uh, I just approach one day at a time. You know, of course, I don't really necessarily yes. like what he said. Wish you to use the better word, you know, to describe my play. Uh, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, all I can do is control my work eth ethic, you know, uh, what I do day to day. Has there ever been a point in your career where something like that would bother you? You know what? I mean, I've been playing football since I was eight. I'm 30 now. So I've been playing roughly uh, 22 years of my life. Uh, so, I mean, I've had people say negative things about me in the past. You know, when I was coming out of high school, people said I couldn't do it. Uh, when I was in college, you know, I was transferring. People said I couldn't play corner because I was on safety originally. And coming into the league, you know, people said I couldn't do certain things. Um, I got drafted in the second round. It's my eighth year in the league. So really negative comments don't really bother me like that. I try not to let it get to me. I think my favorite part of that is not what he said. And and if you're listening to this, you, you missed it. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it. It's the smirk from James Bradbury. Uh, I think there's a lot more he wanted to say, but he took the high road. Yeah, I, I didn't realize he had transferred. He started out at uh, at Arkansas State and graduated from Samford, also the alma mater of Jaquiski Tart, <laughs> oddly enough. But, yeah, and he's like that. I mean, James Bradbury is a total pro, whether he's talking about the, the penalty at the end of the Super Bowl or getting beat on a play or getting an interception. Um, every word is going to be measured. Every word is going to be carefully considered. Um, that's not trash talking is not his game. It's Debo's game. And I think James was happy to leave it to him and uh, let, let, let's let settle it on the field. But it was, <laughs> you know, James is, I mean, he's a willing interview, but he's just not going to, he's not going to go there. Yeah. For the most part, he's, he's, but it has to bother him. 
Yo, yeah, and it has to bother his teammates. Maybe more. Yeah. Probably more than him. You're right. Uh, I don't like it's funny because Debo says all this and he's not thinking about playing the Eagles again at that point. He's it's a lot of sour grapes after the championship game. And he wasn't the only one. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, I, I look, uh, eventually the Eagles did complain a little bit about the field conditions in the Super Bowl. But for the most part, I, I thought they handled defeat with a lot of grace. <laughs> and it was like a pretty stark contrast from that to how the 49ers dealt with their loss in the championship game. Yeah. And I think when the Eagles did talk about the field, it was more in the context of, yeah, it really affected us. It wasn't like, oh, we got cheated. You know, they they cheated us. It was just we couldn't rush the passer, and that's our biggest strength. And so I, I didn't, I didn't really sense it as sour grapes at all. It was just like, hey, it really affected our game. And uh, you know, Hassan Reddick was really vocal about it, but it, it didn't, it didn't come across as sour grapes. It came across as, you know, this may have cost us Super Bowl. Where do you think that expression comes from? Sour grapes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. We've said it a few times, and it's like I don't. I don't know the origin. I'm sure some of our follow, followers do of that. Um, we can uh, definition of sour grapes. Let's see if we can find a, a a derivation where it was first um, first known use. 1760. It's from, of course, it's from the uh, Aesop's fable of the fox who after found, finding himself unable to reach some grapes he had despair he had desired he disparaged them as sour so oh from, that's actually really cool yeah every i didn't want those grapes anyway everything is from either from the bible shakespeare or aesop mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's good i like that uh you got to read some aesop asap it's definitely sour grapes though from the 49ers you last year chuckle yeah uh, oh yeah yeah you know i mean it was it was a lot yeah it was and, and it was it didn't make sense because it was very strange. It was like a football play where the like if the quarterback had slipped getting off the bus, yeah, fine. But he got hurt on a football play because they didn't block the Eagles' best player on that side of the football. <laughs> One of the top edge rushers in the league. Yeah, it was it was strange. And then the other quarterback got hurt playing football. Yeah. Also. So not our fault. Not the Eagles' fault they didn't have a quarterback. They weren't prepared. Yeah, it was it was strange. Uh, what do you make of all of that stuff? I know the Eagles are saying the right things. Nick Sirianni, they're different teams, but there are a lot of the same players and yeah. a lot of the same feelings involved. And you know, Debo Samuel is still there. <laughs> you know, Fred Warner is still there. That'd be funny Nick if Bosa is like, still there. Like all, a lot of the same players are still there. Javon Hargraves, like you know, just start saying the same stuff. You know, like mm -hmm. oh yeah, you know, we should have won that game. <laughs> you know, wait a minute. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell like how much, like you can't let Nick's really big on, it. you can't let that stuff bother you. You've got to, you know, but he's also after the game, if they win, he'll be the first guy <laughs> screaming at their sidelines, screaming at their fans. You had a quarterback in that game. <laughs> exactly. Like that. How, how predictable would that be? Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. But he's, I'm sure he's preaching that, you know, during the game, you gotta you gotta focus on the game, which is true. You can't you can't let that stuff. It doesn't work. Like it doesn't. Uh, I, I never believed that. You know that like bulletin board type stuff worked. I disagree. Really? Yeah. I mean, I th I think it can help you, but I think it it can also hurt you. It just depends on how you kind of channel it. Yeah, I don't know if it can help you. I think it can definitely hurt you. You see teams coming out so oh, fired up. I think so it can help you. I mean, I, I think you have to pump the brakes a little bit if you're you're too amped up. And I think we've seen teams before like start a game too hot and they've got to come back down to earth a little bit. But it, it's kind of like we've heard all these like Michael Jordan stories about basically like making up things to motivate him. Yeah. Well, you don't have to make this up. I mean, there's a team on the other side of the field who was talking smack. I mean, there was a player on the other side of the field who called one of your players trash. Like, you don't have to make that up. And if you if if that helps you, then by all means, you should be able to use it. Yeah. No, and I, I mean, the, the best example in all the years I've been doing this is uh, Lomas Brown in 95 from the Lions, all pro uh, tackle, um, guaranteed, guaranteed a, a win when the Lions played the Eagles in a wild card game at the Vet. And uh, the Eagles didn't 
didn't take it too well, and <laughs> they were up fifty-one to seven at halftime. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Who was the the? Uh, you, I remember there was one time like a backup defensive lineman who guaranteed a win against the Seahawks. Oh, yeah, I was interviewing him, and he just the, the Notre Dame kid, right? Um, oh, that's gonna bother the heck out of me. You know who I'm talking about, right? I do. I remember that, and he told it to you. Yeah, he, he just randomly told. I was just asking about like special teams or something. Um, I don't remember. I remember it happening, and it, it became a big. It was Trevor Laws. Trevor Laws, Notre Dame kid, who was drafted before Deshaun Jackson in that 2008 draft. They were both second round picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Trevor Laws was two picks ahead of Deshaun. Now, what, Victor Abiyamiri was the year before? Yeah. I remember that. It was like a random game in 2011, 2012, and Trevor lost guaranteed a win against the Seahawks. So that was what, 05? What year was that? No. Trevor Laws was drafted in 2008, we just said. Oh, I, yeah, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, we just went on this whole thing about how he was drafted just, ahead of Deshaun. Yeah, you're right. Uh, 2008. Um, so, what year was that game? They, they beat Seattle in 08. Well, he wouldn't have said that as a rookie. They they did win. They lost the game. It was it was 2011 mm-hmm. at Seattle. They lost 31 14. He only played two more games in the league. <laughs> And he was like, that was so out of character for him. He yeah, it was very strange. Um, I wonder if he even played in that game. He had one tackle. Trevor Laws. What year was that? Uh, yeah, anyway. You all right over there? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Still trying to figure out how many snaps Reed Blankenship played Sunday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think a lot of this stuff adds to the game. And even if it doesn't do a whole lot for the players, it does a lot for the fans. No doubt. I yeah. think it'll be a lot. It'll be a fun atmosphere. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be wild. It's going to be raining. It's going to be cold. Eagles fans are going to be in the park. They're already out there. I'd prefer if it didn't rain. Yeah, <laughs> been outside in the rain two weeks this in a row be on third Sunday. straight rain game. Yeah, I, mean, I guess they're getting used to it, right? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they seem to play okay in the rain. They do. Doesn't seem to bother them too much. Jalen Hurts yeah. was actually asked about. The rain. I mean, he's a southern kid, grew up in Houston, played Alabama, then Oklahoma. So, like, it's playing in, in cold northeast is a little bit new to him, but he's handled it really well. I was wondering where you were going with that. I'm thinking, well, rain's everywhere. No, but it's been cold rain. Yeah. 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 Which is a lot different. I guess. Yeah, he does play well in the cold. Yeah, I mean, for a quarterback gripping a football, I think that matters. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know who didn't like playing in the cold? Deshaun Jackson. Mm-hmm. From that 2000. I mean, I don't think. No, the, he hated Devontae it. Smith enjoys it all that much either, but he's pretty good in it. Yeah. You know, did you notice uh, Devontae last week? He had a like a hand warmer. Like, what are they called? Like the the front pouch thing. Oh, yeah. He had his hands in there and he would keep them in there like almost until the snap. <laughs> <laughs> Running his pattern. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go through some injury stuff. Yeah. Uh, because there are some concerns. Uh, and the Eagles had a walkthrough on Wednesday, which is going to be their norm the rest of the season, you would think. But some concerns there. No practice for Dallas Goddard, Fletcher Cox, Zach Cunningham, Justin Evans, and Grant Calcaterra. Yeah, um, certainly. I mean, there's some good news in there, um, but uh, some concerning news. Yeah. I mean, I think that the best news was that Lane Johnson was limited. It sounds like he's going to be able to play on Sunday. Yeah. And that's obviously a huge deal. We'll get the matchups later, but that's a good 49ers front, and you need Lane Johnson. Yeah, and the concern is Zach Cunningham and Fletcher Cox because there are two positions where, I mean, you expect Milton Williams to be back um, two weeks, 13 days after a concussion. You never know, mm-hmm. but he was limited which means he's in the final phase of protocol. So you'd expect him to be back, but they're still thin uh, at linebacker. If Cunningham can't play, it sounds like if there is a move with um, Shaq, it's not going to be this week. Or it'll lot. be so late in the week, you won't be able to play. Yeah, so they have a roster spot. Um, they have Ben Van Sumeren is out of activations. I assume the roster spot's either for Shaq or Ben. I mean, a three-time All-Pro or an undrafted rookie. It's kind of fun. I mean, yeah. I think it's going to be for Ben Van Sumer. I would think you, so. You need him. 
you can agree with Shaq and just have him sign next week. Right, right. And I, I asked Ben if he'd heard anything, and he, he hadn't. You're going to get you know promoted. Um, Is he going to call Nelly if he? He did say he would make sure make sure to text Nelly. Um, that was my Q and A last week. If you missed it, go read it. I read it. Are you not, talking to the, not talking to you? Uh, there are people who listen. Believe it or not, people listen to this. I'm, I'm apparently not one of them. <laughs> uh, but that that is a concern. And Christian Ellis, I mean, he had one. He had a couple big plays, but yeah, they kind of ran at him too. Yeah, they did. They ran at him. He's not. And by the way, Christian McCaffrey and George Kittle. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's a concern. Even if you if if you're 100 percent with with Zach Cunningham. Um, and Dallas Goddard. Uh, yeah, we I, mean, I think I think Zach Cunningham's, Zach Cunningham's probably more important this week than Fletch even. Just because of the Yeah, position. you have more depth at, at defensive tackle. Yeah. I can't believe um, Jalen Carter played 85 snaps. I mean, he's averaging like 40, mm-hmm. which is a lot. Rookie interior lineman. It's the most snaps by any NFL Defensive tackle, interior lineman, in since uh, 2016. It's cra- some of these numbers are crazy, but um, and it's also a concern about the cumul- cumulative effect on these guys uh, at the positions where they're a little banged up and a little thin. So yeah, but Dallas did not practice. Seemed a little encouraged when I talked to him in the locker room. He said. Um, I don't think I'm injured, but the trainers do or the doctors do. Yeah, that broken bone disagrees. Yeah. It's really just a matter of getting that thing x-rayed and seeing when it's um, it's healed to the point where he can't damage it again. Uh, I don't think it'll be this week. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's, it's not about – it's not like a hamstring where you, you test it out. Right. It's just is it healed enough to play? And if it's not, he doesn't play. Yeah, and he's not in any pain. Um but obviously you're not going to take that risk. Um, yeah, we expect him back the following week at least because we know they didn't put him on IR. Although that's still an inexact science. Sure. Um, they, I think he's probably worth the risk of not IRing him, even if he does miss four games, if there was a chance he would miss three. Some guys, you know, Justin Evans, you're not going to do that. But with Dallas, sorry, Justin, I'm not – dissing you but yeah they're gonna have to shut him down by the way which yeah. is something we haven't really talked about yeah because it, it, he, he's not a starter and that but yeah I they mean, have to make a decision yeah he he went on i think it was november f- sixth sixth or fourth something like i that. believe was yeah. when they activated his 21 day practice window so after 21 days you either have to decide to activate him to the 53 man roster or shut him down for the season or release him or release him um it, the the fact that he hasn't practiced last week or this week yet. And the 21 days, I think, is next mm-hmm. Wednesday or something. Yeah. Uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, I'm guessing he's done. I mean, he was limited last week, and now he's not practicing. No, he, was, he didn't practice last week. He was limited the week before. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. But he was limited at one point, so he obviously had another setback. Um, the fact that he's not practicing now, I mean, they don't really have a roster spot for him either. Um. So, yeah, and they have Kevin Byard, who wasn't here when he got hurt, so he's not coming back. But you know, two or three safeties when the year started was where uh, Terrell Edmonds and Justin Evans they were competing for the job with Sidney Brown, and uh, two of them are going to be off the team. Yep. Uh, anyone else on the limited? Participation worry you. We have AJ Brown with a thigh. Well, just Jordan Davis. Let me just go through him. Jordan yeah. Davis with a hamstring. Julio Jones with a knee. Devontae Smith knee. DeAndre Swift ankle, and then uh, Lane and Millen. We already mentioned. I mean, just the fact that your top three wide receivers are all less than a hundred percent. I think they're all gonna they're all gonna play, um, but they're all banged up. And you know, anytime a running back has an ankle, take notice of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure Swift will play as well. I would think all the guys who are limited are going to play. Jordan Davis, we know, is going to play. So, um, you know, I think once Thursday gets here, which is today, it has gotten here. It has arrived. Um, you know, you hope to see some of those did not practice guys be limited, especially Cunningham and, and Fletch. 
So don't like your odds on Cunningham. I don't either. Fletch is interesting because we know how tough he is, but yeah, if there's any way he can play, he'll play. But you get Milton back, that that'll be big. Mm-hmm. Assuming you do. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a safe assumption. Very good chance. Uh, Shaq Leonard was in the building. We did not see him at the Novacare Complex, but our boy Johnny Airport saw him, guess where, at the airport, walking through a big dom. Big smile on his face. Clark, you got a good snapshot of that. Yeah. I kind of think he's going to sign here. Is there anybody in the United States who gets more TV airtime than Dom DeSandro? <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, like, because he's always around the, the coach, the owner. And even when there's an injured player, he walks them into yeah. the tunnel. So, like, injured players, a airport there. guys at the airport, mm-hmm. he's everywhere. He's he's it's incredible. Um, driving that little cart around at practice, he's got a new toy. <laughs> but anyway, and he's the guy telling us how long training camp practices are. <laughs> you know, uh, blue practice, yeah, they're gonna practice forty minutes. He, t- <laughs> he just turn into coat tight. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um. But anyway, yeah, I, I think there's a pretty good chance. I think there's a pretty good chance. I think once Dallas – I mean, look, he could still go to Dallas, but I, I would think his relationship with Nick is has a lot of value. I think it helps. Yeah. And Nick talked about that, which is – I didn't think he would even acknowledge he was in the building, but he did. Mm-hmm. And he said he spent some time with him and said they had a good relationship. And, you know, they were on opposite sides of the ball, obviously, with the Colts, but knowing <laughs> Nick and his whole – you know, his whole thing is – Connecting, I'm sure he spent time with all the linebackers and, and all the secondary and those guys. So um, I think there's a good chance. Uh, it's just a matter of where is he at this point in his career? And, and you know, back surgery is a serious thing. He, he's not the player he used to be. How close is he to that? Um, can, can he? How close can he get back to that? We don't know. I don't think there's any way to know. So I think at – at worst, he's he's your third best linebacker. I, I mean, so he's he's an upgrade from Christian Ellis, um, even if he's not the player he once was. Yeah, and I think that's like a big question with a player too, who was great. How do they handle not being that guy anymore? Do they still think they're that guy? Like Fletch. Yeah, Fletch has handled it really well. He has. Um, Based on what I've read about Shaq Leonard, like he was upset about his play time. He 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 still thinks he's that guy, which I kind of get from a confidence perspective. But maybe it's a good thing too to leave where you were that player and go somewhere else and be a different guy. Yeah, that's that's definitely definitely makes sense. I'm trying to think of of other guys we've seen who who fit that description. And Dominic and Sue last year. Yeah. Yeah, and he was playing like 70% of the snaps. I'm talking about Shaq. It started to dwindle a little bit, I believe. Played 70% in his last game. Oh, no, that's – yeah, that's his last game. Mm-hmm. Uh, 83% two weeks before that. But, I mean, he's a guy who's used to playing 100, 100% in his heyday. Um, I want to take him a, a, take listeners inside a press conference dynamic a little bit because you're right. I, I kind of thought Nick wasn't even going to address – yeah. Shaq Leonard being there, but then he brought it up on his own. He was asked about linebacker, which was a sly move from maybe Zach Berman, just asking him about the position. And he mentioned, you know, you know, you know, there's also someone in the building. And then like once he pulled that thread a little bit, the rest of us went, Oh, okay. He's willing to talk about this. And it got to the point where I asked him what his pitch would be for Shaq Leonard. And I found that interesting too. Yeah. And he's like, I, you know, I'll tell him the truth about what we have going on here and about the culture, but ultimately Tell him to make the right decision. Yeah, I thought that was um, – I thought that was and, – and that's what – it was Zach Berman. I just, I just checked. Um, I want to give him his credit. Uh, I, I thought um, I thought that was a, re- a thing that's really shrewd. Like, if you, t- you tell – if you say, you got to sign here, you got to sign here, and then another team is like, you got to do what's best for you. Mm-hmm. I mean that's and that's that's so Nick that's so Nick Sirianni like look I want your family to be happy I want you to be happy uh, I, I don't want you to go to you know to, to a place where you're not going to fit into the culture you know I think you'll fit in great to our culture but it's it's your call it's your decision that's I think he's really good at that stuff yeah you don't want to feel tricked 
Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Jones or Nick Sirianni. I mean, who's going to trick you? <laughs> like, you know, uh, but he could go down there. Maybe he likes some warm weather. I don't know. We've talked about and they're it. a good team. So either way, he's going to either a good way. team. Yeah. And either way, he'll be at AT&T Stadium in a week. Yeah, and I half. saw your tweet about that. Yeah, it's it kind of fun. That was clever. Maybe he should, I, I've made this joke a bunch. I'll make it again. It was a good joke when I made it the first time. It's a good joke now. Maybe the Eagles and Cowboys should just play for him. Like he gets to just sit at the 50 yard line. Whoever wins that game gets Shaq Leonard. You know, there was once uh, a game where we were asking Buddy if who was going to start it. It was Jerome Brown's rookie year. Are you going to start Mike Golick or Jerome Brown? That was a big thing. Well, Notre Dame played Miami on Saturday. <laughs> and I think it was Tim Kawakami said, why don't you just let that game decide it? And Buddy being Buddy, he's like, yeah, I like that idea. And um, Notre Dame won and Golick started. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Yeah, that's how. But I mean, they were both playing a lot of snaps, but um, yeah. So that reminded me of that somehow. No, that's good. I yeah. like that. That's a fun story. Yeah. Anything else on Shaq Leonard? No, no. I think uh, I think he's coming here. I do too. We'll find out hopefully in a few days. All right, let's uh, let's take a quick break. You know what? It'll be it'll be one of the like one of the um, insiders, one of the network insiders. We'll have that on Sunday. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. And then we have matchups on the other side. Gentlemen, our friends over at Manscaped have been working night and day to bring you a below the waist grooming experience like none other. Manscaped is leading the way in men's self care for your most delicate areas. And every man knows how scary it can be when you're going in for a close shave below the belt. Manscaped is bringing you their brand new performance package 5.0 Ultra featuring the lawnmower 5.0. We're talking about a next generation trimmer with interchangeable blade heads for whatever shave you have in mind. The lawnmower 5.0 even helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in delicate places. Upgrade your grooming game this year by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code HERTS. The package also includes the Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose trimmer, crop preserver deodorant, crop soother toner, and two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 travel bag. Bring your travel and comfort game to another level. Again, get 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code HERTS at manscaped.com. That's 20% plus free shipping with the code HERTS at manscaped.com. We're a big game on Sunday. You want to get into matchups? Yeah, and like you said, even without all the drama, it's still a great, great game. Yeah. Now, if you're the Eagles defense and you're facing this 49ers offense, what's the first thing you're like, we got to stop this? I mean, I guess it's McCaffrey just because he can hurt you in so many ways, but I, I don't know if it's possible to stop him and stop any of these guys. And that's true of really all that. I mean, Debo's the same way. He does – Lines up everywhere, does a lot of different things. Um, so, yeah, it's. It, I think McCaffrey is probably the biggest challenge and the most important guy to account for. I agree. I, I think really since the time he got there last season, their offense has been transformed. Yeah, that was a big move. I mean, to get a guy like that, I mean, guys like that don't just come along. Um, but. I mean, he's got 16 touchdowns this year. And 1,300 scrimmage yards in 11 games. Yeah. Um, he's. I always thought he'd be like a really, really good receiver, like an elite receiver coming out of the backfield and a good runner. But He's great at both. He's a great runner. <laughs> yeah. Um, Doesn't go down easy, yards after contact. And you mentioned it with like him and Debo being interchangeable. It's really like all five of the skilled players they put on the field with Kittle and juice and Ayuk, like that's what makes it tough. Cause they can basically run any route from any spot on the field. And that's just really tricky for, and they move like it's, it's not like they're stagnant on offense. Their motion really makes a lot of sense and it, it's tricky. And Ayuk's, I mean, he's got almost 900 yards already. Mm -hmm. and nobody ever talks about him because of their other weapons. So, um, you're not going to shut them down. You're just going to have to try to outscore them. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a little tricky when you're facing McCaffrey and Kittle in a game where your best linebacker is not playing. 
most likely. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm trying to think who their best linebacker. I was going to say their best linebacker might be Shaq. He's, he's not, not here. He's not on the team. Yeah. I, I mean, Cunningham has been their best linebacker. Yeah, he has. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it kind of, it just kind of accentuates how disappointing Nicobe Dean. His season has been in two ways. I mean, the performance wasn't up to yeah. what we expected. Uh, or what the Eagles expected, I'm sure, and then the injury. Yeah, I don't want to give him a pass, but like, who knows what his season would have been if he didn't get hurt in the first game of the season. Yeah, I mean, he came back um, and played three or four games before he got hurt again, but maybe that was affecting him, sure. Yeah, that's that's my thought. I don't know. But Cunningham's been pretty good, and they're going to miss him in this Have game. you seen a Kobe? Mm. I haven't seen him. No, well, he had surgery. Yeah. So, might not be up to... Being around the building, yeah. Yeah. So you have, those, like, I, I think you're right. You start the week by circling Christian McCaffrey and saying, how the heck do we slow this guy down? Then I think you go to Kittle. But then Debo and Ayuk are, are really good one-two punch. And I, I know Debo kind of operates everywhere. He's out of the backfield a lot. Big yak guy. But how do you line up if you're the corners? Like, how do, like if you're Sean Desai, how do you deploy your cornerbacks against these two guys? I don't know. I okay. I think. I mean, to me, Ayuk is the speedier of the two. Yeah. And it makes sense to have Slay on him more if he can. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Slay on Ayuk, but and then it just gives us the Bradbury Debo <laughs> matchup we want. I know, but I'm 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 just wondering if you want to keep him away from him. I mean, um, why? You know, I don't know. So. He doesn't embarrass him. <laughs> Can't be scared about that. I know. I know. Um, and if anything, I think Ayuk has the speed to embarrass him more than... Yeah, you're probably right. I think that's what you have to do. Yeah. I and- do think the Eagles, the last couple of weeks, they've played two really good tight ends, Kelsey and um, Dalton Kincaid, and they've done pretty well against them. Yeah, and that was a big concern because Jake Ferguson, before Killed the bye him. week, had like 74 yards. Yeah, I mean, a couple of tight ends got him. I think... Um, the guy from Washington, uh, Logan Thomas, Logan Thomas got him, you know, like 60 yards or 50 or 60 in both games. Um, Ferguson had a big game. So, somebody else did. I actually had it in my notes that got soaking wet uh, pregame <laughs> on Sunday. Uh, but, um, yeah, and uh, of course, without Cunningham, that's going to hurt your ability. Did you regret not borrowing my umbrella? No, I, I – I was watching you do the hit. <laughs> because then you're there with an umbrella within one hand and the mic in the other hand. Yeah. And I just, I need a hand to like, I, I talk. Oh, to, I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe I might change my approach to Sunday. <laughs> if it's raining hard yeah, again. We'll yeah. see. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I wanted to mention though, I, I was impressed by how the Eagles deployed Slay last week because I couldn't get a beat on it. And if I can't get a beat on it, like I'm sure there's at least a part of the. I'm sure we say the, the Bills can't. If I can't, the Bills sure can. <laughs> I started to say that, and then I realized how ridiculous it was, <laughs> and I, I tried to stop, and I couldn't. Uh, but I think it did put some doubt in their minds because, like, th- it, there didn't see, seem to be a real reason why, on some situations, Slay was traveling uh, with Diggs, and other times he wasn't. Sometimes he's in the slot against him. Sometimes he's not, and. I, I think in general, like the side's done a really good job mixing it up. Yeah, I think so. And sometimes just mixing it up is enough to keep an offense off balance and and guessing and not sure. I mean, when when Josh Allen every time he drops back is just trying to figure out what the matchup is, that's that's a little bit of an advantage. Mm-hmm. And it it's, it kind of speaks to the larger idea of disguising coverages, which is something that I, I think is in the size wheelhouse, and he's done it pretty well. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see how he approaches this. He might try to do the same thing, or he might just leave those guys on sides and yeah. go from there. Yeah. What did you make of them? This is off topic a little bit, but them not just giving Roby every like they're they're on three safety at times or putting Bayard up on the tight end on third downs. Yeah. I kind of get it, and it I, speaks to the confidence in Sidney Brown to put him. As the deep safety. Yeah. He actually I thought he played better than he has mm-hmm. 
Um, he played, what did he play? 30, 31 snaps or something? Mm-hmm. Something know, like that. I know you know the exact number. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but. I think it was 27. <laughs> see, now I have to look it up. Let's see. I'm sure you're right. Um, but if it was 27, I was only off by four, then I would be, uh, let's see, play time. Go right to play time. Sydney Brown, 30. Oh, wait. 30 on special teams. You only played 12 on defense. That's my bad. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking of Rick. Rick's played 19. Okay. Um, I mean, we know one thing we know about Sean Desai is he likes he likes rotating everywhere except corner. Pretty much except corner. Everyone else is gonna rotate. And edge. <laughs> well, edge lately. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of edge, uh chance for a son Reddick in this game. I, I think you have a big game. Uh, uh, if they keep to their sides, Josh Sweat's going to be dealing with Trent Williams, and that's that's tough. <laughs> Trent is – it's funny. Like, he might be their best weapon, <laughs> honestly. It yeah. seems like every single play goes behind him. He's been unbelievable yeah. this year. He's 35, too. And he probably won't get thrown out of this game because Kayvon's not there. <laughs> Uh, but on the other side, Colt McKivitz is the new right tackle. Uh, McGlinchey's gone. And I, I thought Reddick had an advantage over McGlinchey. Uh, he definitely has an advantage over McKivitz. Kid from Cleveland, right? McKivitz? I don't know where he's from. He's from Cleveland. Um, yeah. But, you know. Mid-round peg a few years ago. Yeah. I would, um, West Virginia. I would give, um, I wouldn't count out sweat, Sweaty. I mean, I think he likes that kind of challenge. Um, we'll see if he can get any pressures, but um, I love. I mean, you got to love the way Reddick's been playing. Um, he's about to become, I guess, only the third Eagle with maybe the fourth with three straight ten sack seasons. Now, uh, two straight ten sack seasons. I'm sorry, he will have three straight, but not as an Eagle. No, yeah, but um, I think the last one to do that was Trent Cole. Two straight. Two straight. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was Trent Cole, and then before that, William Fuller. And obviously, Reggie and Clyde did it. Um, I think that's it. Uh, but, yeah, he's he's so consistent. And it doesn't even seem to matter who he's up against. He's going to get pressure. What a great signing. Great signing. Uh, probably repay him after this year. I would think so. Yeah. Make him happy. How old is Reddick? He like 28? Yeah, I think something like that. Just turned 29. Okay. Uh, Happy September. birthday. Yeah, well, September. Uh, a little late. <laughs> um, yeah, he's been he's been so good. Um, so you'd like to see him get some pressure from uh, from Sweat, but Reddick's got the matchup. Yeah, and sometimes that's all it takes. So yeah, looking forward to seeing that. And when the Eagles have the ball, I, I think the the big matchup on the line. And, and look, that's a really good front in San Francisco. You have Javon Hargrave. You have um, Chase Young there now, who's helped them out quite a bit. But Nick Bosa is still Nick Bosa. I know the sack numbers aren't there. He's still a, a great player, and that's why you want Lane Johnson back for this one. Yeah. Um, I thought Driscoll played really well, especially pass blocking. Um, Way better than he did a few weeks ago. Against the Jets. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I had a good talk with him yesterday. I, I wasn't inter- interviewing him or anything, but uh, we were just talking about – what it takes to always be ready. And he said something that just took him a while to, you know, he's always been a starter. Where do you go? BC and Auburn, mm-hmm. BC and Auburn. Auburn. Yeah. Um, he said it just took him a he while. He was teammates with Prince Teguanogo. Oh yeah. I think he's saying he was teammates with Prince. Cause you paused after you, cause you're, I guess you're trying to like figure out how to say his name. He was, like, <laughs> he was teammates. It with was Prince. like a split second pause. No, it was like five, six seconds. That's not true. It was maybe half a minute. Um, well, I said Prince, and then I think in my head, I was like, everyone knows that's Prince Tega Winoga. <laughs> well, when you say Prince, I mean, I kind of think of, you know, the musician. I think of of. Do you know Prince Tega. played a secret gig in Philly once at a bar on, on like, um, Delaware Ave? You know, there used to be all those, like, bars on Delaware Ave. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think any of them are still there. They used to be, like, the hot spot for a few years. And he came, he didn't come out and perform till 3 a.m., <laughs> And it was just like a word of mouth thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, Prince is playing at the whatever club. 
It's he right was the, very good about keeping the mystique up. Yeah, he was. He he really was. Um. Anyway. Uh. Um. Yeah. Lane. When we were talking about Lane. That's yeah, and you don't know what what lane you're going to get. I mean, yeah, Driscoll. I thought Driscoll really hung in there, and uh, he was just saying how stout, how much stout has helped him prepare for. You might not play, but you might play. Um, and he he called him a genius and said a lot of players that play here and go somewhere else, like will will say, you know, it's just not the same without stout. It's just when you don't have that, it's like you just have this coach, good coach, but. He's not stout. Anyway, um, we don't know how healthy Lane will be. I mean, I you hope he's going to be close to 100%. Um, but, uh, you know, he was he was injured enough not to play Sunday. So we'll see against Bosa. And Bosa's still really good. I mean, um, his sack numbers aren't that far down, are they? Because he got five. He has eight in 11 games. Yeah, well, that's – Yeah, it's good. Yeah. He had 18 and a half last year. Yeah. Um, and what fifteen and a half the year before, but he's still dangerous. He's still he's still really good. That'll be a fun matchup to watch. And it helps him to have Chase Young on the other side now. Absolutely, it was. It's funny to think about it because like they do have a good line, but they needed some edge help, and, and they were able to get it from Washington. Chase Young gets to face the Eagles three times this year. How about that? Well, Kinda I was weird. thinking the other way. They get to block him three times. Yeah, either way, that's no fun. Yeah, uh, he's he's become a good player yeah you get a motivated chase young it matters yeah i'm just figuring out how many sacks boss is on pace for so 12 and a half after 18 and a half but he could easily get three any game mm-hmm. you just hope it's not this game if you're an eagles fan but you think deandre swift could have a, a nice game i think he better you worry about the ankle a little bit but um He's really good. Uh, I don't know if he's we... been such a catalyst for this offense. It feels like every big drive they have, he has at least one huge run. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he had a 35. He had a big one against the Chiefs, like a 26 or something uh, on a big touchdown drive. Um, I, I'm really impressed with him. I, you know, he had that lull there in the middle and they weren't running the ball and, and Jurgens was out, but. Durgan's is back. If Lane's back, I would think he'll be. I mean, I, you're, you're facing a front like that. Um, you want to keep the pass rush off Jalen. The best way to do that is to run the ball. And if they're back to where they can run it consistent, consistently against anyone, man, they're gonna they're gonna really need it. I'd still like to see a little more Boston. Gainwell comes in as 23 yards, doesn't get another carry. I, I'm just, I know I sound like a broken record, but. I, I just think that if you mix it up a little, and it's nothing against Swifty, Swifty, um, but uh, I just think you're more dangerous. But they don't seem to want to do that. I'm just looking up the Niners against the run. I mean, the Niners are good. The Niners are good at everything. Well, if you remember, they were statistically good against the run last year. But going into that championship game, the Eagles thought they could run against them. Yeah, and I mean. I'll th- kind of throw the numbers out from that game because they got a big lead and then they, right. of course, ran the ball. But I remember entering that game, they thought that they would be able to run against them. The Niners actually moved ahead of the Eagles. The Eagles gave up like what one seventy something Sunday. So the Eagles, uh, the Eagles are now number three in run defense. The Niners are two. The Bears are still number one because um, everyone throws against them. Well, everyone throws against the Eagles too. Um, but the Niners are are tenth in yards. Per carry, yeah, four point oh, four point oh one. So I, you know, they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna have to try because I mean, you can't throw it fifty times against the Niners. You're asking for trouble if you do that. And that kind of leads me to my next matchup. Here is it's been a very opportunistic defense for the 49ers this year. Twenty one takeaways. They lead the league in interceptions with fifteen. As good as Jalen has played, and and not all the picks are necessarily on him. Uh, there was the AJ one that was definitely AJ's fault. Last week's was a little fluky, but yeah, he also threw it yeah. at a guy. So, um, yeah, the 10 picks in 11 games is well above his career average. Yeah, he only had, what, six all last year, mm-hmm. I think. Is that right? Um, it's a concern. And, yeah, you're right. They're not all his fault, but sometimes the fault is is mixed. Um, 
a deflected ball. You say, well, it's not his fault. It got deflected. Well, he threw it to the guy that <laughs> deflected it. Um, some are just a drop and it goes into, I think there was one with Goddard that Goddard had in his hands. And it, yeah, there have been some fluky ones. And the AJ one yeah. recently where AJ thought he, he was going to beat him deep, but he kind of that broke the route. Chiefs game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but you can't afford to to turn the ball. I mean, this team, the Eagles are 22 and 0 in their last 22 games when they're plus one or better in turnover margin. I, I apparently wrote turnover ratio in a tweet and somebody like got really mad at me. It's like it's not a ratio. It's not. It's not. I, I know, but like of all the things to get <laughs> mad about uh with me, um, that would seem to not be in the top hundred. But anyway, he did. Um but yeah, you'd like to see him have a clean game. And I think it's really hard to beat this team when they don't turn the ball over. And when they, you know, certainly they don't get a lot of takeaways, but when they do, they're, they're tough to beat. Yeah. So I, I think Jalen really responds to these type of games. He, he really seems to respond to the moment and um, whether it's a Super Bowl or, you know, at, at KC, um, big finish last Sunday, big finish. But I know one thing, and I try to get Nick to talk about this. You can't play 30 minutes. Like, have they played 60 minutes this year in a game? What are their best games? Tampa. Cowboys. Yeah, but I mean, that was... Rams. Rams, yeah. But it's not a lot where... I and, think and I think that's why the 49ers are favored, because their wins have looked more impressive. And I think they're, health, they're healthy. Mm-hmm. They're healthier than the Eagles are. They have extra rest, a few extra days. Um, I can't wait for this game. But traveling from the West Coast is tough. It is. And I, I think that's that doesn't get factored in as much as it should. Maybe not. Yeah. I haven't seen any numbers on – I could look up what they've done on the road uh, in the East Coast. But um, I think – look, I think they're two evenly matched teams. I think they are they both have a ton of weapons. Niners have more weapons, but – I still think as good as Purdy's been, I think Jalen Eagles have an edge at quarterback. Um, defensively, the Niners are better. So we'll see. Yeah. See. All right, let's take a break. We'll talk some Deshaun Jackson on the other side. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martorano's Prime on Open Table. Deshaun. Now, are you saying Deshaun or Lushon? Yeah. Um, oh, Marty. Morn Henwig joke. Morn Henwig. That's how I remembered how to spell his name. Um, yeah, Deshaun. Um, I, I don't think anyone's surprised he's retiring. Although, I, look, he's still fast. We we know that. It's but. so funny because he is retiring, and it's the right decision. His body won't hold up anymore. Right. I still have no doubt that if he had one snap on Sunday, he could catch a seventy-yard touchdown. He'll have a roster spot, <laughs> and he'll be in the building. <laughs> Make uh, that a three-day contract instead of a one-day. <laughs> I um. Yeah, I wrote a little thing about Deshaun, and the, uh, my favorite Deshaun stat is is this, and he's one of only three players in history to, with eleven thousand receiving yards and a seventeen point oh average or better. And I think that kind of really capsulizes his career. That the production was there; like he wasn't just a specialist; like he caught all, he ran all routes, routes, whatever you want. I said whatever way I say it, you're going to criticize me, but. Um, you know, he ran the whole tree, and obviously he's known for the big plays. He had more 60-yard touchdowns. So he did their roots in a tree? Yeah. He had more uh, more 60-yard touchdowns than anybody who ever played the game, including punt returns and and one rushing attempt, uh, two more than Rice, uh, Jerry Rice. Thanks. Um, but the crazy thing is, he had, out of those 26 plays of 60 yards or more, only, tw- only 21 – other players had half that many. 
and 11 of them are in the Hall of Fame. I don't think Deshaun's a Hall of Famer. I think he's in the conversation. Um, he's an interesting case. He is. Never made all pro. Uh, never led the league in yards, although he led the league in yards per catch four times for four different teams, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, Eagles, Washington, Tampa, and who else did he play for? Play for? Baltimore? Yeah, he didn't play that much for Baltimore, <laughs> but it might have been twice for But anyway, um, he never never was on a Super Bowl team, although at the end of that 2008 NFC Championship game, man, he made an incredible play getting on top of um, DRC, catching that 61, 62, 62-yard touchdown from five. Gave the Eagles the lead. It's funny, like people talk about, just, you know, Donovan never won, never won a big game. He gave his team the lead in with six minutes left in the NFC Championship game in 08 on the road. And then Kurt Warner carved up the Eagles defense and and they won the game. They converted a fourth and three on that drive. The Eagles held them. They probably win this, probably go to the Super Bowl. Um, and that was a year there was only there was not an extra week between the NFC and AFC championship games and the Super. So we had to we had to pack <laughs> as if we were going to New Orleans, I think it was in 08. Um, but I was always a big fan of Deshaun. He came up so big in big moments. Um, I'll never forget that that first play of the game in Washington because they were like it was they were we sit in the end zone in in, in FedEx. I used to, you do now. But they were that play was coming right at us, and just to see Deshaun separate and and catch that ball, stumble a little bit, get his footing back, and and score first play of the game. I think it was at the the fifty eight thirty seven game. I think um, he was one of the most exciting players I've ever seen, and did it for fifteen years. Did it at a high level for about twelve years, and uh, yeah, it'll be good to see him on uh, on on well on Friday. We'll see him. Then we'll see him at the at the link Sunday. Yeah, he's signing a one day contract on Friday, officially retiring, and then Sunday he'll be honored and he'll be the uh, the honorary captain. Yeah, what do you think about media voting for Hall of Fame? Like, I don't know if there's a better system, but yeah, I don't know if there's a better system. Like, you could say former players, but then it becomes which guys they like, right? But uh, think- which doesn't mean that doesn't happen with writers, right? But it. I, I think the goal is to just be as objective as possible. I think some guys are. I think some aren't. The fact that T.O. didn't get in. Yeah, it's silly. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Deshaun wasn't super media friendly. I don't um, think that'll keep him out. I, I think in order to get to make Deshaun a Hall of Famer in your mind, you have to kind of like reshape the way you think about the Hall of Fame. Well, I think one way to do it is, was he the best at anything? And he was the best deep ball tracker in history. Mm-hmm. And... But he never. Yeah, I mean, I think there's too many. There's such def- a log jam right now. There is. And I mean, the like, of the finalists this year, you have uh, Tory Holt, Steve Smith, Andre Johnson, like all those I guys. Said Tory Smith. Uh, and like I a, said, Tory Holt. Right? Yeah, you did. Okay, but like yeah, like Henry Eller. Henry Eller was better than Sean, and he's not in. Yeah. So it's it's and, and there's a lot of other really good players who are going to become eligible before him. Yeah. It's. It's a tough position because there's so many good receivers. Yeah, and like honestly, the guys I mentioned, Torrey Holt, Andre Johnson, and Steve Smith, like I think all those guys are probably Hall of Famers over him. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I probably wouldn't vote for him, but I really think he's in the conversation. I do too. Yeah. It's just like how much do you factor in what he did so well? And he he was always like. You know, if you, if you, you know, like when PFF came out, right, it's like you, you grade Deshaun Jackson. He's not going to grade out well because right. he's, he, he could have an awful game, but that one play yeah. can just change a game. And he yeah. had that ability. Yeah. What was your favorite play? Your favorite Deshaun play? I mean, the Giants in 2010 is yeah. the obvious one. Yeah. Um, probably the one you mentioned, the, the Washington game. That was just so much fun. Yeah. That was just like, what what a moment to like to start a game like that is just yeah. so much fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean the the and he and Vic had such a chemistry. Yeah, well that's the crazy thing about the, the miracle play is people forget how freaking good Vic was in that game. Yeah, like Vic's the headline if Deshaun doesn't make that play. Yeah, I mean they they scored twenty eight points in the last like seven and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. I remember Selick had like a sixty five yard yeah. catch and run. It's crazy the 
that Deshaun bridges the gap. Yeah. Yeah. He caught a touchdown pass from Donovan and a touchdown pass from Jalen Hurts. That's crazy. The other four Eagles quarterbacks, Kevin Cobb, Carson Wentz, Nick Foles. Who's the last one? I don't know the last one. I looked this up yesterday and I thought I'd remember it. And now that I'm here, I don't remember it. Who's the other one? Oh, no, this is awful. <laughs> I got to just look it up now. Well, I'll be over here. What? I said Vic McNabb. Foles, oh, you know, you didn't Cobb. say Vic. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't we say just talked about oh, play, oh, but oh, okay. yeah, yeah Vic. that's right. Got more from Vic than anyone. Yeah, that's crazy. 13, 13 from Vic, 11 from Kirk Cousins, 9 from McNabb, 7 from Foles, 5 from Ryan Fitzpatrick. And he gave us uh, my fa- one of my favorite moments all time is remember that when the, the Bucks won a game and Ryan Fitzpatrick came out in all of Deshaun's jewelry? Yeah, that's it's right. One of my favorite clips. Yeah. He's talking about we just we can't let the success change us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun player. Yeah. Flawed guy, fun player. Yeah. Um, it was a joy to watch him. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap this up, pretty big game on Sunday. You don't have to give me a prediction yet. Where are you leaning? I'm leaning toward Niners. Okay. Leaning Niners. Just I just have too many questions about the Eagles' defense. I just don't know if they're going to be able to. I think the Eagles can score some points against anyone. I think they'll score, you know, 28-ish. Um, I just don't know if they can hold the Niners under 30. Hey, that's fair. I mean, that that's totally fair. Uh, I think I'm picking the Eagles. Just because I feel like I learned my lesson when I picked the Chiefs, and this team just doesn't lose. And I'm almost at the point now where I'm going to pick them until they lose. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. We'll see. I'm excited for the game. I could change my mind, but I'm leaning that way. Okay. I have one other thing I wanted to mention. Okay. Um, Shane McGowan died this morning or yesterday, um, the great singer, songwriter from the Pogues. And uh, I think one of the most brilliant songwriters ever. And uh, I got to see him twice, both times at the Electric Factory, 2003 with the Popes and 2008 with the Pogues. And, you know, it's it's sad, but, you know, you know, it's really cool. His the last the last tweet on his or X, whatever, <laughs> on his timeline was about Jason and Travis Kelsey, you know, because they did the the version of. uh um fairy tale of new york that was like the number one song in the country and shane tweeted on uh my birthday actually on the 16th uh tell them i'm knocked out uh talking about that song that was his last public uh statement was about travis and jason kelsey and and uh and a christmas song so i thought that was really cool incredible songwriter um man i have a list of my top uh, hundred concerts <laughs> somewhere. I don't believe that. And they're fifth. That the Pogues show was fifth. Um, incredible band, incredible songwriter. So he'll be missed. But it was the the connection with the Eagles is really cool. It is. And I don't know if you saw the clip of Jordan Davis singing. Yeah. Every big dude on that team has pipes. I know. It's unbelievable. I know. I wonder if Lucidas can sing. <laughs> we'll ask him yeah. in the locker room. All right, let's wrap this up. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor, rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, please. We're almost at 100,000. We need to get there. Keep sending us your Spotify year-end wraps. We love seeing that. And that's it. We'll talk to you after the game. Enjoy it, everyone. For Rube, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.